All right, so a moment ago we were looking at uh, the classic or the old way of doing things uh, where we would optimize our site with keywords. And we saw here that we we're going to be a needle in a haystack trying to be found for these keywords that everyone else is trying also. Uh, the concepts of modern SEO, it's a moving target. In the old days when there were less websites, um, the search engines really relied on keywords in that you developed one or two or three keywords that really defined what your website was about and then you needed to include that keyword in as many places as possible on your website. That keyword on your web address, that keyword in the heading of your page, that keyword on your first paragraph, on your last paragraph, in your meta tags, everywhere. That was the old method, and that worked because the search engines were not as sophisticated as they are now, and they would look at your website and see your keyword over and over and say, great, this website must be about that, let's rank them well. Well, the problem, of course, is that if a lot of us, being honest people online, are trying to rank with keywords, there's also dishonest people that are trying to rank with the same keywords and abusing them, putting keywords that are not relevant to their website on their website and crowding the field for, uh, against those of us that are trying to do it legitimately. So there's the concept of black hat SEO and also white hat SEO. So black hat, white hat, black hat SEO, white hat SEO. And that just basically means that the good methods and the bad methods. And that comes from the classic cowboy movies where you can tell the bad guys coming into town are wearing black hats and the good guy, the sheriff, is wearing a white hat. So black hat SEO employs using bad techniques. Techniques that might give you a pop at the beginning that yes, I'm number one for a couple of weeks or months. But then as you continue to use the bad techniques and if Google finds out, suddenly you're on page 40 because you're going against the rules. So I'm going to be teaching white hat techniques, all the positive techniques, the techniques that the search engines recommend, and I'll be pointing out techniques that perhaps used to be white hat and now they're black hat or gray hat, you know, somewhere in the middle. And this is one of those things about uh, keywords. It's not about having a keywords on your meta tags and in your address and all of that like it used to be before. Uh, it's not about having the keywords, these generic keywords. It's about more of the long tail keywords. That's the latest technique. And it's also about content and other concepts. But let's do another search to further illustrate this. It's not about these old style of keywords, basic keywords. It's about long tail keywords. Let's do a search again on both the search engines, and this time write a more complete sentence or concept about what your website is about. I'm a web design company, but I'm trying to market myself or be found as a uh, web design company for small businesses in East Lake. That gives me only 310,000 results instead of 1.6 billion results. It's a much more detailed kind of search. It's a long tail keyword search in that it's got the keyword web design, but it's also got the keyword East Lake, the location, and it's got who am I trying to be found by small businesses. I'm not trying to be uh, hired by a Fortune 500 company. I'm looking for small businesses. So I'm also thinking in terms of a person searching for my company um, because more of us are more sophisticated. We're more specific when we search after 10, 15, 20 years perhaps of using the web the web is about 25 years old, after using the web, the internet, for many, many, many years, we get more sophisticated, and you yourself are probably searching something more like this. You're not using the simple basic keywords anymore, because that doesn't work. Perhaps you're being more specific. And if you yourself 
are maybe not being so specific, hundreds of millions of other people are. So we need to think in these terms. We need to think in much more specificity, the long tail keywords. Let's see my results. Ads, of course. Then I've got bluespotweb.com, that didn't show up before. WDD Web Designers in Eastlake, that didn't show up before. Eastlakebiz.com, that one's new. KO Marketing, Eastlake. A web development meetup. So results, different results are appearing. More results of actual uh, companies. There's a few Yelp profiles, of course, also, but the more generic search was giving us a lot of Yelp results and, and maybe an article or a blog or two or a tutorial, an article on Wikipedia. Here I'm getting a few more results that are more specific. I'll compare that same long tail keyword search over on Bing. I'm going to skip the ads for a moment. VSWebDesigns.com. A link at the yellow pages. Forbes top seven web design mistakes small businesses make. These results are a little bit more also uh, a bit more informational rather than actual page results. So even in this case, I get an article from Forbes magazine. I get links over to uh, Yellow Pages. Those kinds of sites are useful. Yellow Pages and Yelp and other kinds of uh, rating sites because that lets me get ratings and reviews and testimonials from customers. I have a hard time deciding, is best web design company really the best in Eastlake? Well, what, what are they saying on Yelp? That helps me make a better decision. Question? No, we are trying to find all of the concepts. This is one of them. We'll be looking at more. We're trying to figure out all of the concepts that our website is about, all of the content that it has. In my company, we are going to be uh, we're trying to sell our services to small businesses, our web design services to small businesses, spe specifically in Eastlake. In a moment, I will also maybe do a search for uh, uh, social media marketing companies for restaurants in Chula Vista. I'm trying to be more specific about all of the stuff that my website is about because that's what people are going to be searching for. Not just web design, not just social media marketers, very specific. How does it relate to my business? Where am I located? Maybe what's my price and affordability? So I'm trying to figure out more about what my site is about, more keywords what my site is about, more concepts what my site is about. I want to think about, I want you to think about how are your potential customers going to be finding you? If you're trying to find something, think about how you search. People are being more specific. People are writing more complete sentences because they're seeing that the results are not the best results when they are generic. And now that more and more of our, now more and more that we've got smartphones with a little personal assistant that you can ask, let's, let's see if this works. I always have bad reception here, but let's see here. What's a good Italian food restaurant nearby? Here are 10 Italian restaurants near you that have good reviews. Okay, so I searched for, like I would be searching, uh, like a human. I'm not typing keywords such as find restaurant 91913. I'm not searching like a machine. I'm searching like a person. And then the machine... Um, tapping into Bing, because I've got a Windows phone, Cortana searched Bing, and it tells me, here's Italian food restaurants near you, because it knows my location, because I'm on a cell phone, 
and then it gives me Yelp review. So Restaurante Caz, 0.61 miles away on Convoy Street, has four stars, 92 Yelp reviews. Godfather has 1.60 is 1.67 miles away on Claremont Mesa Boulevard with four stars, 448 reviews on Yelp. Maggie's Cafe, Little Sam's Pizza, Manja Manja Mobile, Cucina Basilico, etc. So these results are all real companies. None of these that are showing up are Olive Garden or you know what other big chain restaurants. These are all like local real companies because they've gotten the results over. They've gotten um, reviews and such over on on Yelp. And I specifically searched for like a human. What's a good Italian restaurant nearby? I don't care that I'm going to get a result from a big chain restaurant. I want a nearby restaurant. I said best, and best is showing me star ratings. This one's got four, and a, this one's four stars, 339 Yelp, Yelp reviews, Valari Italian Restaurant on Barnett Avenue, five miles away. <clears throat> so what I'm getting at here is think in terms of searching for complete sentences, because more and more people are going to search that way. We're going to have an activity where we write more of this down, but the concept is we're going to need to start to think about more complex, more detailed topics, long tail keywords. Let me illustrate that. I'm going to draw here a very simple graph, x and y. Um, Upward is frequency. Frequency is upward. To the right is keyword. We've got a chart, a graph that looks something like this. That should be a straight line at the end when my hand moved. Let's say it's a straight line at the end. <clears throat> Try one more time. Something like that. Okay. So at the left end, there are some keywords that are going to be visible or used a lot. Their frequency is very high. These are keywords that companies, websites are going to try to use. A lot of companies are trying to use these certain keywords, like web design. Therefore, I'm in a field that is very crowded. A lot of people are trying to use those same keywords. As we move further to the right, we have keywords that less people are using, and also keywords or phrases, complete sentences, that less people are using. Down over here, very few people are using web design, affordable web design companies in East Lake for small businesses. Very few are, are using that. But a lot might be using web design. Less might be using web design in Eastlake. But as we go on and on, less people are using some of those keywords. And this is known as the long tail. Think of this as the back of a cow. There's the tail. The ending over here, this is what we are going to be targeting. These are our long tail keywords. And I, I say keywords, but it's not literally actual just one or two words. It, it's a sentence, it's a phrase, a key phrase. It's just concepts that are longer. Keywords, perhaps, that no one else is using, but better um, whole keywords that really define what your web presence is about. That, coupled with many other things we'll talk about, will help us be still a needle in a haystack, but a smaller haystack than the one over here, where there's lots of needles and lots of haystacks. So this is an aspect of modern SEO, targeting the long tail keywords. Keywords that less people are using. I'm going to save this chart to the network folder in a little bit.
but this is a concept that we're going to focus on. And that's what I'm showing you here, these two searches that I did. These are more long-tail keywords, more natural language searches. You saw I did one very literally right here when I searched like a real person. I, I could be asking that to my friend, but I asked it to my, to my app, and it found the results, um, good results. Question. There is the danger of using keywords that no one is searching for. There's also that. So we will be exploring what is the balance. Keywords that are specific enough for you to stand out, but not so specific that no one finds you. But it's not just about the keywords. That's just SEO. We also need to talk about SEM. We need to talk about being on Twitter and Facebook and creating a profile and a presence there, and that will help and feed traffic to your website, and that kind of snowballs into if you're being found on Twitter, if you've got followers on Twitter and you're using some of these keywords, that's going to trickle out to the rest of your presence online, and when someone searches, like we saw earlier, not only did my company's website appear, but so did our Twitter and our Facebook and all of that. So it's all a big, big ball of wax. It's the SEO, it's keywords that we do on our website, but it's also SEM, stuff that we do outside of our website. So the old way was we wanted to get that keyword web design. And we also really, really wanted to get those keywords in our, in our web address. I wanted, I, I would kill for webdesign.com. Someone took it a long time ago. Okay, I'm going to go for eastlakewebdesign.com. Someone took that a few years ago. Okay, I'll settle for Eastlake, California, uh, webdesign.com. Great, it's available. The problem is you're getting longer and longer names. They're not really giving you as much return on investment and then people try to then put dashes and so forth. I recommend against dashes in your address, such as, you know, amazing uh, dash web design, or let's say web dash design dot com. Let's say that is available for me to buy, because amazingwebdesign.com is taken. I would not recommend this because the dashes are not really going to help you, and the dashes are starting to seem nowadays low quality. Uh, there are many aspects we need to talk about regarding SEO, and one of them is the, the quality of your content and the authority of your website. And a website that is using dashes is starting to be more of an indicator of low quality websites whereas some shady black hat company is going to claim 40 websites and have dashes in them to claim all of these keywords and link them all together for a link building scheme and perhaps in the beginning they have some positive SEO and they get results but then Google finds that right away and they're on page 200. So sometimes some of these techniques unfortunately are you're going to be subject to guilt by association or guilty until proven innocent because there's so many bad techniques and bad companies out there that if you accidentally use a bad technique and you get caught by the search engines they're gonna shoot first and ask questions later and you're gonna be on page 12 and you're gonna need to then climb out of that negative SEO hole and one of them is dashes in your name because that's starting to be a real big sign of bad websites cheap-canadian-medicine.com or affordable-dog-groomers.net because all the big names were taken, the keyworded names were taken a long time ago, these bad actors, these black hat companies are trying to then still capitalize on the old way of getting these keywords which are not as useful anymore because now we need the long tail keywords. But we're not going to make a website that is affordable, web design company, san diego, eastlake.com. 
we're not going to make that huge name. We don't need to. Because think about the companies that are famous and have short names Twitter.com, Google.com, Facebook.com, Flickr.com, Snapchat.com. These are names, these are companies, these are brands that don't need a real name or a keyword in their title. If you've never heard of Snapchat before, what would you say it's about? Something about chatting, maybe? What's, what does the snap mean? That it's fast? I'm going to chat with people fast? I don't know. If you've never heard of Flickr before, what would you say Flickr website is about? If you've never heard of it before. I don't know. Something is flickering. Mm, can't figure it out. What about a, a website if you've never heard of Twitter before? Oh, it's, that's a bird website, right? A bird watching website. Birds Twitter, right? So what I'm saying is that you don't need to try to claim a name that fits your keywords that is super specific about what your company is about because there are so many sites out there that have been very successful with names that are made up. If you have not heard of Etsy, what would an Etsy be? Is it a person, place, or thing? Animal, vegetable, mineral? I don't know. But they've made a name for themselves as a company with, uh, you know, handmade um, crafts and such. It's a marketplace for people selling their handmade stuff. Well, how do, why don't I see handmadestuff.com in their name? Not necessary anymore because all the good names are taken. Yes, you might be able to find your perfect name with a .biz or a .net or a .org or a .co or a .club or of the other 500 that just came out. Um, so, sure, that'll work if you want uh, quality dog walkers. Dot, um, dot .biz or .co, sure claim it no problem i'm just saying that if you are, are if you if you really really want a dot com and the name is taken don't bother about making a 20 character long name through the various factors and techniques we'll talk about here we will we will work at getting your name brand the recognition and the fame that it needs so that if you've got some sort of esoteric name like behance.com you'll still be found and known. How many of you have ever heard of the website Behance.com? Almost, almost no one. What would, you, what would you guess? What's Behance about? Any volunteers? What's Behance about? Behance is a place for people... Well, it's not even .com, it's .net. Uh, Behance.net is about online portfolios. People show off their work as graphic designers, web designers, etc., to show off their work and also perhaps to get a job as a graphic designer. And I would have never known that by the name. Why isn't the name graphicdesignersshowcase.com? Doesn't matter. Behance.net has built up a reputation, has built up authority, has put content online that has made them a top destination for people that are looking for web designers to show their own work, to hire people, etc. And we've got dribble.com. Oh great, it's a sports website so I can keep up with uh, the latest uh, basketball games, right? No, dribble.com is another kind of website uh, with three B's actually not that one, dribble.com. That's another website where people can show off their work, get hired, and so forth. Dribble with three Bs. Again, it doesn't say anything in the title about portfolio designers uh, or bidding hired and whatever. And this is a completely made up and misspelled name. It doesn't matter. Through various other factors that we talk about throughout the course, um, you will take whatever your website is called and work with it to be findable and optimized.
So if you have not claimed your website name, don't worry. Don't go out and rushing to go to, to search for, uh, you know, affordable babysitters in eastlake.org. We can, um, you know, deal with a name like yipyap.com. And then through various other techniques, we will uh, get you fame and, and so forth. But let me do a little segue here. Let's go to this website. Domainhole.com. And that's hole like a hole in the ground, not hole like, like a complete. Domainhole.com. This is a website that helps you search for uh, pot potential website names. This will help you search for expired domains. If you wanted a, a particular name, this can help you search for that. We've got the name spinner and the name generator. Let's say name spinner at the top here. So go to domainhole.com, go to the name spinner, and basically you put in a keyword. You're going to combine that with a business noun, a business verb, common things, technology term. Let's just say I wanted victor.com for my web design company, but that's taken. Okay, I want victorcompost.com. That's taken. Well, I'm going to put in my name here and tell it to combine it with technology terms, add the technology term at the end, try to find me a .com, and this will search for names that are available with these terms that you're interested in, and then also the link will take you to to buy it. Now mine, again here, is not, I'm not finding any of these available. VictorWireless.com, that's taken. VictorWeb.com, that's taken. VictorViral.com. Maybe you want to search And this might uh, give you an idea, or it might um, help you find a, sp a place, uh, a name that is. Also, you can go to the name generator. You go to name generator. If you don't have a specific keyword in mind for your domain, you could try using our name generator. This tool will generate random, pronounceable domain names. These random domain names are often referred to as Web 2.0 web domain, domain names and are often unique and trademarkable. So let's say I want a 7 character long .com or .info. So this will take random letters and combine them into something pronounceable. Again, a lot of them might be taken because the web, the technology of the web, has been around since 1989. So 20, almost 25 years ago, right? A lot of time has, hap has passed and perhaps a lot of names are taken. But the point is that you don't have to really fight to get your keywords in your in your domain name and don't use dashes. Um, one caveat though, this will make sense a little later, but if I've got victor.com and then I've got like a blog and then I've got how to uh, update WordPress. That however is okay those dashes there are okay. In your actual address of the .com or .net or whatever, that's a little less recommended. 
but what's highly recommended is if you've got some sort of blog, and we'll talk about how blogging is important for SEO, then there you do want the dashes to differentiate those words. That's very important. I wouldn't be running all that together into one long word. That hurts you. But what I'm saying is if I've got Victor, dash web, dash designs, dash emporium, emporium, that is not so good because that's a mark of a low quality website. Even though you're not a spammer, even though you're not trying to scam anyone, it's guilt by association, it's guilty until proven innocent, so I would avoid dashes in the actual domain name, but do use dashes, and this is pretty automatic if you use WordPress, do use dashes in your sub pages, so if you have you know, victor.com slash about dash us, that's fine. If you've got victor.com slash contact the company, that's okay. Even better is victor.com slash contact, something short. So any questions so far? So we'll talk about, uh, a little later, recommendations on service providers because to get your own piece of the internet, your own piece of the web, you need to buy two things. One is the domain name, which is your .net, .biz, .org, .com, .whatever, and a bunch of them just came out. .club, um, believe it or not, .ninja, uh, .arrow, A-E-R-O, there's a bunch of them. You can look them up. So if you were never able to get .com, you might be able to get you can get .asia, .xyz, there's other ones that are coming out. Of course, the .com is the one that everyone assumes you have. One of my first websites, it's still around, um, it's vmcinc.net. So if you go to .com, I never bought the, the, the .com, the, dot, the .com, I never claimed it. If you go there, there's some company there that wants to sell it to me. Um, I never bought it, and I'm fine, I don't need it, I've built up a presence online that .NET works. Um, the reason I bought the .NET instead of the .com is because I've been doing this stuff a while and when I first got into the business of, of web design in early 2000, 2001, the .com was way more expensive than the .NET. So at that time I was just starting off, I, was, I didn't have a lot of budget so I bought the .NET, built a reputation that way and then later on I thought well I'll get the .com just to, just to have it uh, claimed, and then when I went to go buy it, it was already taken. And the company that currently owns it, they're they're trying to sell it to me for like two thousand dollars. I'm like, no, that's fine. I'm fine with my .net. I've built up this presence, and I get found and so forth. So I don't have to have the .com. If you get a different name, that's fine. We just need to work at building a presence and putting out content that helps you get found. Yes. Can you suggest purchasing the other ones. For instance, on GoDaddy, when you want to buy your domain, it's, you know, .com, then they recommend you can get .net, dot, I can't remember all the other ones, but they have a few others, and it's like not for that much more. That, uh, that could be valuable, yes, claim your other names, but you have to decide which other ones. Because nowadays they'll want to sell you, okay, you've got your .com, don't forget your .video, your .club, your .me. So maybe if your .com is available and the .net, those would be good. But, um, you know, it's more yearly expense. Oftentimes these companies will sell you the other dot whatevers for a low first year price. Like right now, dot com is $9.99 if I get it, but then it goes back to regular price, $14.99. Not so expensive, but if I do end up getting seven domains, I'm paying just for those names. And you have to decide how important that is because if um, some other company 
buys your name with a .net that you didn't buy um, that may or may not hurt your traffic or your SEO because there's another company out there kind of claiming your name. So short answer is that if it's in your budget it is useful to buy the other ones uh, but it's not uh, it's not gonna make you or break you. Yes? What are those? What is that? Yeah, they are known as domain name extensions or top-level domain extensions. And in the beginning, these were just different ways to organize websites when the web was younger. If you had a website that you were selling something, you were a commercial entity, so you wanted victor.com. I'm a commercial entity. If I was a collection of other websites maybe to share information or research, I might be victor.net because I'm a network. Or if I'm a non-profit organization, I would be victor.org. So in the beginning, <clears throat> you should put your website in the right dot whatever. But things have changed. Anything can be anything nowadays. And now because the dot com is so popular and they're all running out, now they've, uh, they've made available dot video and dot club. And in theory, you should, if, you're, if you are going to be, you know, the local web designers club of Eastlake, I would like to get Eastlake Club, uh, East, Eastlake Designers Club. That'd be nice, but it's not necessary. It's not that you're going to be penalized if you've got the wrong dot, whatever. Some are attached to countries. Maybe you can. Maybe you are. You ship internationally to Mexico. So I want to get Victor's Export, Victor's Exports MX from Mexico, or Victor's Exports UK if I sell to to England. Yes. EDU is one of the reserved ones that you have to have an educational institute and on most of these places you will not be able to buy them because you have to have all the paperwork and everything properly processed to claim that you are a real educational institute to get a .edu. Yes? So you're saying that based on your experience the domain <coughs> extension does not affect your ranking results? That's right because it's really, we're going to be coming back more and more to the bigger concept of content. It's whatever relevant and useful and authoritative content you have. The downside of having a non.com is that people are so used to .com. So they're going to say, oh, I'm going to visit your website, vmcinc.com. Well, that's not my website. But because I'm putting out stuff on Twitter or I'm putting out blog posts, uh, that will help my .NET be found more and push the .com one down because the .com is just a website. It's a it's a it's a parked domain of someone trying to sell that to me. It has no relevant content, so they're not going to appear on higher results. So I was saying that there were two things that you need to buy: the dot, the the web address, the URL and then the hosting which is basically the hard drive where your website lives those are two things you need to buy the domain name and the hosting to claim your own piece of the internet I'll get into those details a little later but if you want to start exploring you don't have to rush out and get this just yet you should learn a little bit more here but to explore a bit let me briefly mention a few companies that I would recommend to to research about and decide your budget. One of the big names is GoDaddy. GoDaddy.com. Um, they're so big they've had Super Bowl commercials. And we know that that's expensive. So GoDaddy.com, um, to my knowledge, most recently they are the largest provider in the world. More, most websites, many websites are on GoDaddy. They're not the only one though. Another big one is Bluehost.com. They're also going to sell you uh, a domain and hosting for various prices and various features. They're all in competition with each other. They're saying $3.95 a month, starting at $3.95 a month, which includes a free website, a free domain, a site builder, bandwidth, tech support, etc. Again, I'll go into more of this detail a little bit later. 
but I'm just showing you here. GoDaddy, Bluehost, I've dealt with both of those companies. They work, they've worked well. I've also dealt with HostMonster.com. That also works well. All of these are going to have some sort of tech support. Call us now, live chat. That's what you want. You want to be able to call them whenever you, you want on your schedule. Many of these are open 24 hours a day. I know that uh, GoDaddy, for example, is open 24 hours a day, and their call center is in Arizona, one time zone away. I call them at 10 p.m., and I get, a, I get an answer quickly. I talk to a real person. I get my issue resolved. Same thing with these other providers. And finally, HostGator. That's another one that I've dealt with. And those four, I have had good experiences with. You might have had some experiences with some of these and not so good. That's unfortunately the way it is. Some people have no problems, some people have problems for various issues. I've been with GoDaddy since about 2001. I've never had a problem with my website except early on when I was a struggling student. I didn't pay my monthly bill and they shut down my site. I paid it and it came back up. And I really have not had any trouble since 2001 or so. I've dealt with, I've had a client, one of my longest clients since about 2002. Uh, she's had a website on GoDaddy with a lot of traffic and a lot of activity, and she often was having troubles. And oftentimes because of she needed to increase her. Uh, her, her resources, she needed to pay a little bit more for more bandwidth or more hard disk space and so forth, more hosting. And she was kind of curmudgeonly and kind of uh, cynical and, and she kind of blamed the company a little bit more than I would have thought to blame the company, but eventually she quit GoDaddy and went on to Bluehost about five years ago. And she's been fine with Bluehost. And so I've dealt with various clients on these various providers. When I start with a client brand new, my company recommends one of these four and they all work well, and they're all within different budgets and prices and features. I would recommend on your own, explore them a little bit, maybe talk to the free tech support to ask some questions, don't commit to anything, maybe get some quotes. As we learn some more here, I'll talk more about it. And then of course during our lab times, during our breaks and so forth, I'd be happy to help you one-on-one -on -one to make a better decision. But this is something you're going to need eventually if you don't have it. Your own piece of the internet at a service provider. So let's um, take one more short break. When we come back, I'm going to give you a handout that we're going to fill out to help us uh, address our SEM requirements and SEO requirements. So we'll do uh, a little shorter this time, just about eight minutes. So we'll be back at 11.50.